What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mike's Tool Shed. This episode, it's not about tools at all. This is five things that suck about being an electrician. Don't get me wrong, I like my job. I really can't see myself doing anything else, but it's not all peaches and cream. There's stuff that sucks about it. And I actually made a little list, wrote it down here in Notepad, and uh, probably the, some of the most prep I've ever done for a video, but so I could remember my points I want to get to. Um, let's get into it. The first thing that came to mind, and this is, uh, it doesn't, it's not that bad, but the first, the first, the very first thing I thought of is waiting on other trades to do their work so we can complete ours. I've got to wait for the plumber to hook up that water heater. I got to wait for the HVAC guy to hook up the uh, air conditioner. I got to wait for the painters to paint so I can put my outlets in. I've got to wait for the, the site crew to level out that whole side of the parking lot so I can run a trencher through it. I can't run a trencher up a 30 foot tall mound of dirt. I got They got to move it. Every step of the process, we're waiting on somebody else. We're usually the first ones on the job and the last ones to leave, you know, um, and the entire time we're waiting on other people to complete their work. Uh, what's worse is the deadlines don't change. The deadline is the same from the beginning of the job till that deadline. And if the plumber's dragging his feet on putting the air conditioner or the uh, water heater in, that's less time I have to hook it up that I that could be using to go hook up other things. It all comes down. It all comes to a head at once. And it seems like a lot of these tighter deadline jobs, um, because we're waiting on everybody else to do their shit, at the end, it's, uh, you know, six, ten hour days. They're in inviting everybody to come in on Saturdays to help that final push to get the whole thing done. And um, it's, not the wor it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's annoying waiting on everybody else. It's like, I got to wait for the sprinkler guy to hook up the fire pump and like I said, the painters and plumbers and HVAC guys, site guys, everybody. That was just the first one that came to mind. Yeah, the tools are just here to look at. I, you don't want to look at me. Here, you can look at uh, this. This is what I'm, I, I got today. Mm, excuse me. <laughs> um, this is probably the most obvious. Number two is the, the most obvious on this list. And it's electricity is dangerous. Any job site's dangerous. And pretty much everyone on that job site is subject to the same dangers, except electricians have another level up of danger, and that is the thing that we do is work with electricity. Now, there's a lot of of safety protocols in place so that you don't get shocked or something blows up in your face, but shit happens. I've been shocked before. It's not for, because I wanted to. It's not because I thought that, you know, um, I was 100% sure it was off. It happens, and, and some of those have been my fault, but some of them have been other people's fault. Um, one time, my boss, you know, I was hooking up outlets, and you don't lock out, tag out an entire panel of breakers if you're hooking up outlets. It just does, it's not a thing that happens. You just make sure all the breakers are off, try to keep that door locked or the panel cover locked, but my boss went in there, and he was mad about something. He started flipping breakers, and I'm holding on to an outlet tight, and it lit my ass up. Um it just it happens it's unfortunate and we do everything we can so that it doesn't happen but if you if you're an electrician and you've been in the trade i don't want to hear the bullshit in the comments where oh if you had lockout tagouts or you're not doing the, if you got lit up you're not doing the proper safety um tell show me an electrician that's been in the trade for five or ten years that hasn't been shocked once hasn't blown up one thing it doesn't happen a lot but it does happen if a plumber completely screws up the worst that happens is a flood or he gets wet or some turds go on the floor. If we screw up, there are fires and electrocutions and people die. We have the most dangerous thing to work on out of everybody else. Not to mention we're working um, on tall ladders and on lift man lift equipment. If you're on a tall ladder and you're pretty damn sure, you know, you, this sounds like a, a lackadaisical approach to safety, but if you're pretty sure that it's off, uh, for whatever reason, you're on a ladder and you get lit up, you could fall off the ladder. If you cross two legs of 480, that sounds like a shotgun going off. Molten copper gets blasted out 360 degrees, and there's a fireball that's about a thousand times more intense than a welding arc. And that all happens in a millisecond, and you don't even know what the hell happened. You're deaf, blind, and uh, you might be burned. And you don't know if the ringing's going to go away, and you don't know if your sight's going to come back. It's that's other other dangers that other trades don't really have to deal with as much. Um, 
it only takes 120 volts. Well, it takes much less than that, but it takes like 10 milliamps to hit your uh, heart the wrong way, and that's it. You're done. You go into cardiac arrest. And I've always heard that 120 volts kills more people than anything because it's the most common voltage uh, across the board, and it's the one people are most complacent with, especially if you've gotten lit up by it before. You know what it feels like. You're like, oh, it's not that bad. Well, it is that bad. If it goes from hand to hand across your chest, it's very dangerous. It doesn't take much to screw up your body's electrical system. So it's, we do everything we can to be safe. And I ha honestly, I haven't gotten lit up in a while. I've been very, very safe and very cautious. I hate getting lit up. I hate electricity. People will play with me with tasers and stuff. And I'm, I'm the most afraid of those things than anybody. I, I, electric fences, that shit scares the hell out of me. I hate electricity. It's dangerous. Um, number three is... The, the trade, any kind of trade, uh, whether you're an auto mechanic, uh, HVAC guy, a plumber, this goes for uh, pretty much everybody, it's hard on your body. I do enjoy having a physical job, a, a job where I'm not sitting at a desk going into the same place every day, doing the same thing every day, um, where you're not burning any calories. I do enjoy the physical aspect of the job, but you know, you, you, you're trying to pull a wire and it gets really tough at the end sometimes, and you, you're giving it everything you got, and you have to do it. You have to get the wire through. You can't just say, hey, that parking lot light's not going to work. I'm a little bitch, and we couldn't figure out how to pull the wire in. It's just impossible. Sorry. No. You you give it your all sometimes. You try to. I try to be easy on my body, but, you know, I come home, I'm sore. I, you know, I, I've done things where I was sore for a couple days. Um, some people really go all out and really beat the hell out of themselves. I've seen some really hard working older guys that have just destroyed their body. And I'm, I don't want to end up like that. And I, I try to take it easy. If, um, if get help with lifting something or, you know, don't, don't try to be a hero is basically what I'm saying. Cause it's, you're only hurting yourself. You might get that job done and get a pat on the back, but you might've just did, torn a ligament. You don't know. You don't know what you're going to do to yourself really pushing it. So Take it easy out there. It, it can be really, really hard on your body. Just look at the old guys. Watch people's habits and how they work. And the older guys that take it easy, they never really, uh, you know, they're not really hurting themselves, are in better shape than the guys who go balls out all the time. You know, some 50, 60-year-old guys looking pretty rough after 30, 40 years in the trade. And it definitely kick, it'll definitely kick your ass over the long term. Um. Number four, number four, uh, I wrote, trades attract some dipshits. <laughs> You're going to work with some of the lower quality people in your community. Uh, generally, all you need is a high school diploma and you're, you're in the door. You can work in any construction trade that, you know, that, uh, that attracts some dipshits. Um, on the lowest levels of construction, the turnaround is insane. You'll see a guy for two days and then he's gone. He quit or got fired. Um, same thing with my company. I honestly don't bother learning your name until you've worked there for like a year because there's just so many people that come in and out. It's like a revolving door. It's more rare to see people that have worked for a company for five, 10 years, uh, than, you know, than it is for a guy to work for two weeks or six months and then you never see him again. And it's dealing with some maybe, uh, less than scholarly <laughs> idiots. You, you work with idiots. I worked with a guy, a little a side, a little side story. Uh, we called him Paint Chip. I'll tell you two quick stories about this guy. One, he used to drink like a two liter gal, a two liter of soda like every day, and we're like, dude, we're working out in the heat. You can't drink all that sugary shit. Don't drink soda. That's bad for you. And he's like, well, I'm fine. I feel fine, you know. Like, just don't do it. And we're telling you from our experience, just, you can't drink soda all day. Dude comes in the next day with a gallon of milk, and he kills like half of it by like 10 o'clock and next thing you know he's like around the corner throwing his throwing his throwing up throwing his uh puking his brains out around the corner throwing up all the milk because he was like that well that was his alternative to soda the guy got fired and a little another quick story is i was over at buddy's house and he had went into the pizza delivery business and we ordered a pizza and there he was right at the front door he's like oh hey man and he proceeds to take the pizza that should be held like this and put it under his arm so he can shake my hand. <laughs> you don't do that with a hot pizza. The dude couldn't even handle uh, delivering pizza. So 
paint chip if you're uh, watching this sorry <laughs> i won't give out his real name we call it paint chip um yeah you're gonna work with some dummies and you gotta you you can't ever assume someone has common sense so that they're gonna be able to handle a task you gotta you gotta hold their hand and treat them like a little kid until they prove themselves that they can uh, handle tasks and have common sense uh, number five is the basic working environment. Um, if you work in an office, it's 72 degrees every day, all day, 365 days a year in your office. It's climate controlled. We don't get climate controls most of the time, unless you're doing remodels or, or just doing some service work, tweaking some things in an office or something like that, or in someone's house. Most of the time, there's no climate control at all. In fact, the climate control doesn't happen until we hook the shit up. You know, I've I've jumped out the, uh, what is it, the red and the white on a heater to get some heat going before the HVAC guy comes back to do a startup. Um, it, same thing with lighting. It's usually dark. Bring your own lights. We work in the dark all the time, but everybody else seems to cry about, well, when are we going to turn the lights on? When are we going to turn the lights on? When we turn them on. When when you see them on, then they'll be on. That's how, you're, that's how you know. That's how you know we hooked them up. But... <laughs> The working environment is is crazy sometimes. Uh, in the state that I live in, we have temperatures from, I think the coldest I've ever remembered it is 5 degrees, and the hottest was like 108, 109. It, it, you go across the board, and when it's hot, there's no air conditioning, and when it's cold, there's no heat. Working outside, I will say my company has, uh, if it's like 10 degrees or less, 10, 12 degrees, or if, there's a, if it's a wind chill of you know zero They'll tell us, hey, no working outside. We don't want anybody getting hurt. We don't want anybody getting hypothermia. We'll get it tomorrow when it warms up a little bit to 15, you know. It, you got to bundle the hell up in the winter and do your best with all the safety gear. The, the Those vests, the safety vests get kind of hot in the summer. Safety vest, hard hat, and safety glasses. It is, that is not fun when you're just sweating like you're in a sauna. Uh now, and on top of the temperatures, it's dusty, um, it's loud, you hear equipment going all day, people using hammer drills, people using grinders. The thing I hate the most is the uh, the framers when they're cutting metal studs with the big giant chop saw. That is, God, I hate that. that is, it's like nails on a chalkboard to me, and it's so freaking loud. We wear ear protection for a lot of things, but it's just not a good environment. It's not... It's not um, it's not for little sallies. <laughs> you gotta have, you gotta, you gotta be able to deal with some adversity in your working environment. If you want air conditioning all day, go work at a bank. But if you don't mind the temperatures, you know, being a, being an electrician is not too bad. Uh, I guess if you worked in Southern California, it's pretty sweet. But most of the country is not like Southern California. And uh, this is a bonus, bitch. It's just something I've been getting more and more pissed off about. Is uh, engineers, designers, and architects. And the level, uh, the quality of, of those job positions is definitely went down. Whether it's a designer that says, oh, we need to um, put outlets on this uh, pallet wood wall that's like uneven as shit. You know, it just seems like a good idea to them. They're just like, they draw it out, turn the prints in, make it happen. And then we're stuck trying to figure out how to do things uh, to designers of light fixtures. They don't, they don't design a fixture and then test install it anymore. I'm sure back in the 40s and 50s, you know, if there was a design flaw that involved the installation, they would catch it, they would redesign it, and send it out. Everything's on the computer, everything's in CAD, and there are some things that aren't foreseen until you actually get your hands on it and go to hook the thing up. Uh, I've... <laughs> there's been a few Friday or Saturday nights, I'm so pissed off about a particular light fixture, I'll uh, have a few beers, and then I'll email the company and be like, look... This is why this light fixture sucks. Please redesign it. And I'll try to make it kind of funny. I'll try to, you know, I purposely make an email that's not offensive or I don't curse a lot in it. But maybe something that gets passed around the office. Like, hey, check out this guy. He just took us to task on this new light fixture we just came out with. It's all designed in CAD. And then they just send it out and you got to figure it out. That is thinking on your feet and, and problem solving is like one of the biggest the biggest parts of being an electrician because not nothing goes smoothly anymore. I mean, it, it never really did, but it's gotten a lot worse in the past, I'd say, five or ten years. And that's my bonus, bitch. This video is about 15 minutes now. 
I had a, I had a rough one today. I had a rough one today, and I just had to drink a beer and uh, vent to my cell phone camera and to all you people, subscribers, and uh, whoever else sees this video. So it's it's not the end of the it's not the uh, it's not the worst trade in the world. I, I actually think it's one of the best. You get to be creative. Um, you get to use your hands. You know, the code book and the prints are the guidelines, but everything in between, it's up to you. It's up to you to figure out how to do it. And and then 20 electricians will do the exact same thing 20 different ways. So there's plenty of things I like about it, but damn, there's a lot of stuff to bitch about. I try not to bitch. I don't, you know, I don't want to be a complainer. I roll with the punches, you know. Uh, life gives you lemons. You make a margarita, whatever. <laughs> So that's it. Five things that uh, suck about being an electrician. Thanks for watching.